In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can use Fiddler Everywhere to help troubleshoot other devices that might be having problems. The nice thing about Fiddler Everywhere is it runs on Windows, Linux, and Macs today, but it won't be running on phones, right? So there still are a class of devices where we can't actually run Fiddler Everywhere itself. There's also situations where I need to troubleshoot someone's machine but choose not to install new software on their machine. In these cases, what I would like to do is have the client device point at my laptop where I'm running Fiddler Everywhere so I can see the traffic on my machine from those clients. In this video, we're going to see how to configure that. In this example, we're looking at our travel web page and we're troubleshooting it from the device that also runs Fiddler Everywhere. So typical scenario when I'm doing my development, I have my client, I have Fiddler Everywhere running, and I'm able to trace the traffic. Let's look at what that looks like in Fiddler Everywhere. So here we see the typical requests we've seen to access that web page. Now what we want to see is how can we configure Fiddler Everywhere so that it can capture traffic from other devices other than this laptop. The first thing we're going to have to do is configure Fiddler Everywhere to be able to capture this remote traffic. So we'll go to the Settings. We'll go to the Connections tab. Here on the Connections tab, we can see that by default, Fiddler's listening on port 8866. We want to select the Allow Remote Computers to Connect. So we probably don't want this on most of the time, but when we want to troubleshoot a remote device, this allows Fiddler to listen on that port and see traffic from those other devices. The next thing we'll want to check is that we have HTTPS set up to be decrypted. And if I look, I can see I've already got capture HTTPS traffic. If that was not already enabled, when I first click that, it's going to ask me a few questions. So this should be concerning if you know what HTTPS is. So HTTPS is supposed to be encrypting traffic from the client to the server and not allow people in between to see. Fiddler Everywhere is positioned in the middle as a proxy and by setting up capturing HTTPS traffic what's going to happen is it'll ask you if you want to trust Fiddler's certificate. What that allows you to do is that now whenever you visit a website and it comes into Fiddler, Fiddler will use its certificate and create a, an HTTPS certificate that looks like the destination server. It gives that back to the browser. The browser on my machine will trust that certificate to sign, so it will assume that that is actually the server certificate. Therefore, when the browser sends it encrypted, it will get to Fiddler. Fiddler will be able to use its private key to decrypt that traffic so that we can see it in Fiddler everywhere. Then it will go to the actual web server, get its certificate, download and do the encryption the rest of the way. So the data is indeed protected from the client all the way to the server, but we're configuring Fiddler and we're explicitly trusting it to create certificates that look like real servers so that it can do the decryption. The last thing I need to do on this machine is I need to determine what its IP address is. So I happen to be running Windows, so I will go to a command prompt and run ipconfig. I've zoomed into the section I care about. What I'm looking for is that IP address, 192.168.0.7. That's the address of the laptop on which I'm running Fiddler everywhere. I'm going to need that when I go to the client so I can direct traffic to this machine. I'm sure this has never happened to you, but your website works absolutely fine when it's on your machine. Someone else tries to use it somewhere else and it doesn't work at all. That's the scenario we're trying to run here. Someone else is, in this case, sitting on a Windows machine, a laptop. They're trying to use the site, but it's not behaving like they would expect. Generally, I don't want to install specific software on their machine because six months from now when their printer breaks, it's going to be my fault. So instead, what I'd like to do is I'd like to just route their browser traffic through my other laptop where I'm running Fiddler everywhere. So we're going to look at the steps we have to do here to do that. So the first thing we're going to do is Fiddler provides what's called an echo service. So I'm going to go into my browser and make sure that this machine can actually talk to that machine to make sure we have everything set up correctly. I could have issues with firewalls on the remote machine. 
I could potentially be on a network where we can't see both of the machines together. Some networks isolate all of the devices from each other. So this is a good first step to make sure I've gotten through all of that, that I can actually reach that specific device to be able to do troubleshooting. So the first thing we have to do is put in our actual IP address and port where Fiddler is running and see if we can see the echo service. So in this case, I have the IP address of my laptop that's running Fiddler everywhere. I want to set it up to use port 8866 because that's where Fiddler is running on that machine. So I'm just going to hit enter. And if everything is connected correctly between these machines, we should see Fiddler echo back. And that's what the echo service does. So by doing that, so first of all, I just used HTTP. I just wanted to see that I could actually reach that IP address and that port and that I could see that Fiddler Everywhere is running. And this confirms that all of that is true. So now we'll look at the next steps to route the traffic. Now that we've confirmed that that works, we want to actually change our browser and manually change the proxy settings so that we are telling it to send all traffic to that IP and that port. So I happen to be using the Edge browser. I'm just going to go to the settings. And I'm going to go to System and Performance. And I'm going to open the computer's proxy settings. So I'm going to manually change the settings for the proxy setup for both HTTPS and HTTP. Now once that's completed, now that the proxy is configured, I'm going to visit the website I'm having issues with. At first, I'm going to start using just HTTP. And we're getting the website to appear as we would expect. And that's being proxied through the remote machine that's running Fiddler. So we'll be able to see the traffic and do everything we could normally do in Fiddler whether that's just do tracing, if we want to do modifications, anything Fiddler Everywhere could do, even if it was local on this machine. We've just got it happen to be remotely executing somewhere else. Now we're back on the machine that's running Fiddler Everywhere, and we can indeed see the traffic using HTTP to that particular website. We're able to click on individual requests, look them up in the inspector, and do all of the things that we would normally want to do in Fiddler everywhere as if it was a client directly on this machine. We're just routing it from that remote machine to this IP and port so we can take advantage of Fiddler everywhere being set in the middle. So that's great. We're able to route our traffic through the remote machine to actually reach a destination and see all of the traffic in Fiddler everywhere. Modern websites should be using HTTPS today. So now we have to make it so the client will trust the certificate on the remote Fiddler machine. So again, on the Echo service page, I can click to download the Fiddler root certificate. Now that I have that certificate, in Windows I want to open up so I can install that in the proper place. So I'm, I did a start run and I'm going to type in MMC and hit OK. The first thing I need to do is add a snap-in for managing certificates. So I'm going to choose certificates and add, and I'm going to ask for the computer account and do next. And it's going to do for a local computer. And I'm going to hit OK. Now I'm able to see the certificates that are installed on this machine. Now Windows comes with a set of default trusted root certificates. I'm going to click on the certificates under trusted root, go to more actions, and say I want to import that certificate. So I do a next. I'm going to browse to that file in the downloads folder. I'm going to put it in the trusted root certificate authorities. So now what I've done is I said any certificates I see from servers that are signed with that certificate my browser will now trust. Now I'm going to make that same request using HTTPS. And we'll see that because that certificate was trusted I'm routing traffic through the manual proxy I set. It's going to the machine with Fiddler everywhere. 
that machine is generating a certificate that looks like the remote site, and now the browser on this client trusts it. So now we've set it up where I can do any sort of tracing or anything else I want to do in Fiddler Everywhere on my other laptop. So let's go take a look at what it looks like on the Fiddler Everywhere machine. So back on the machine with Fiddler Everywhere, we can see that the requests are coming through as they normally would, but it's from a remote client in this case. So the power of this is when you start doing it for other devices. So you can configure this for iPhones, Android phones. You can look at the Fiddler blog, has good details about the specifics on iOS and how to configure that to do the HTTPS uh, certificate trusting. But the nice thing is now I can continue to use Fiddler everywhere on my typical machine, but clients that either can't run Fiddler everywhere or where I don't want to install software, I can route all of that traffic through my laptop with Fiddler everywhere, and I still have the full capabilities to troubleshoot, uh, make modifications, use the rules, composers, all the things I'm used to, even though the client is on a remote device. In the next video, we're going to focus on some miscellaneous features available in Fiddler Everywhere. So far in the video series, we've seen a lot of very interesting and useful techniques, but we haven't really considered if you had used Fiddler Classic in the past, where some of these capabilities that I was accustomed to are not as obvious how to do them in Fiddler Everywhere. So we'll show in the next video how to accomplish some of those same tasks, but using the features available in Fiddler Everywhere.